I couldn't find a shorter version of that song. I'm sorry, I tried. But that song is pretty long, so if you want to skip it, just skip it. Hey, anyway. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of F-Zero Ending It All. Last time, Captain Falcon has actually trained Rick Wheeler in using the booster fire to which that he failed. But he's still willing to train with Falcon. And the Cosmo Terminal is coming up, which Dark Million, along with their new associate, Mr. EAD, would be participating in. Believe it or not, this will actually be the quarterfinals, and this is like two story arcs. Probably three story arcs in this. So, let's get this over with. Right, lap 11. The task force are becoming more desperate for the rest race in Cosmo Terminal. With Falcon's training pay off, what would the team know about the uncovered secrets from him, Leon, and Beast Man? Try and keep this short. Tinsel is becoming more anxious day by day. Having Jack and Lucy around wasn't the same without Rick. What really was starting to get under his skin was... I'm gonna go with Leon! He's a really sweet guy despite his animalistic ways. I don't care what anyone says. Doesn't the inside count? What should I wear? Okay, okay, you're in love with Leon. We see that. Jack the Brash Home Wrecker replied as he raised his hands. Oh, great. Now I'm alone with this egotistical, self-deluded, brainless... Something interrupted his self-ranting as the team heard a buzz. From the surveillance, the pilot saw two others approach the main entrance. Oh, it's him! It's Leon! And they came, too! She saw Beastman and Clank. Jack chased the duo down, and the lift descended to the ground floor. Mademoiselle! Wow, you are such a hunk, Leon! She kissed him on the cheek, and he smiled and panted. Jack was a bit disgusted by it and envious. Hey guys, what's up? Why can't Tracker, Homer, and Shio come along? Oh, the Huck Miners won't come because they're still trying to improve on their racing. And Drac is busy with Roger as well. Ah, so it's just you and Clank then. Tinsel was a bit disappointed that not all her friends would check out the base. She was hopeful that they'll be able to see the duel between Rick and Falcon if Clank is successful. <clears throat> That chamber is like a hacker's playground. I'll see to it that we'll watch the race in no time. Hold up, buddy. You're not an elite member yet. We don't allow outsiders here. So do me a favor, make like a tree and leave, will ya? Jack! This is no way to treat our guests. Yeah, especially to a cutie. Besides, we're accepting Clank, aren't we? So, how is he any different? Don't worry, I found him. I'll keep an eye on him. All right, fine. Perfect. But you better not slip up. As Leon and Lucy left, the Shining Star offered the Masked Man scrub a bite to eat at the Falcon House. Clank accepted while Jack stayed to watch over the fort. There he explained during their breakfast was served. So tell me, how did you become such a great beast hunter? Because let me tell you, we have never, ever seen anyone like you in the F-Zero circuit before. Except maybe Falcon. You're much like him! Only not with bounty hunting, but with animal hunting! And you two seem very mysterious with your dinosaur costume. Are you planning to take it off? Uh, Clank! Mind your manners, boy. Anyway... Did you start when you were very young? The boss was listening closely while washing dishes. His name is Christopher Annex, and when he was a kid, he had a traumatic childhood experience with gators. On the planet White, he was nearly killed by a giant crocodile, and was left scarred for life, both physically and emotionally. His family had always been shrouded with danger, much like Octoman. Thankfully, his world hadn't fallen under war and poverty, unlike Leon's. Tied the shyness that swelled within him and donned the Beast Man persona, 
create the outfit for my real dinosaur hide to give himself an awe-inspiring figure. Wow! You actually still have living, breathing dinosaurs there? Awesome! Yes, although we had to stay alert for any of the vicious carnivores there, the herbivores and omnivores aren't much of a threat. Total the tinsel could totally relate to that event as she too was stricken with an endless dread after the near-death incident and not crossing the 50-foot gap in White Land. He's been in Planet Alcatran before and he understood her fear entirely, as his trauma was done by a crocodile. If I could some if I could somehow overcome that fear, I may lose this dino facade. But how I became the galaxy's best beast warrior is simple enough. He was also a soldier, and his deadly sharpshooting skills and aggressive tendencies made him feared by the beasts he hunted. His occupation made him quite popular and a hero to many people. Once he had eliminated all the dangerous creatures from his home world, he decided to enter the F-Zero X Grand Prix to Milan himself and anybody wishing to employ his services. He couldn't thank the late after Clash enough for converting an old piece of military machinery into the Feist Tiger Speeder. First year of racing that he knew by a Rex, he was done in Kirwan, of Kirwan Corporation. He competed in X and GX with a vow to protect the other pilots and crowd from Virex in case a creature ever decided to erode. He became a deadly foe as Leo found out he was part of Dark Million. At one point, he stated to Mr. Zero that he wanted to make a helmet and Virex as a reward. Even though he had sworn to his safe to defend everyone from Bilex's wrath if he should go wild. He wanted to put him in extinction. The Hyperspeeder and I are a really unbeatable team, and both of Zero Racing and Beast Hunting require dedication. A moment's hesitation can be the difference between life and death. Maybe you should join us in the mobile task force. You're so devoted. He did, but he declined as they only wanted to win prize money from Dark Million's clutches. However, since Octane and Biorex are a part of it, he now wished to assist the Galaxy Platoon direct indirectly. He did appreciate Baba being wiped out back at the Big Blue Race. He encountered Biorex at his home planet, he was an aggressive beast, especially to humans and mammoths. Remember when I helped you out of the greed plant? That's why I'm here. She couldn't be any more grateful for that. Thanks to the data provided by Clank, Virex was decided by the Cure Lone Corporation, like Chris mentioned. Jeez, didn't we learn anything from Jurassic Park? Ugh. Well, it's actually very similar to that. It was actually arrested once by Captain Falcon at the time of the first Grand Prix. That bastard! How can anyone escape from him? I swear I'll be the one to put an end to him. Mark my words, I may have plans to capture Octoman as well. This made Tinsel uneasy with him. He's only been misunderstood. He's just doing this to save his home world to Korra. They're not as lucky as you, Chris. Octoman and his family have always been hunted, both by predators and even the Federation. He just needs some help. This was a first for Leon on the subject of X. However, he didn't later didn't have a desire in abducting him, as he's considered to be a teen, warm-hearted creature. Whew, that's a relief. He happens to be a very good friend of mine. And he helped Tinsel save Rick. He too loves Lucy, and he was an excellent busboy. I would love to employ him again if he isn't wasn't too busy and sow all the time. All right, you got me. But I have to wonder, what does he do there? The guys and the gals told him everything. Heh, <laughs> another middle finger to the anime. I despised how Beastman and Leon got one episode. Well, actually, they were both in one episode, in which Beastman hunts Leon, and Leon was actually a werewolf. What? What the hell? This isn't supposed to be like that. God, I hate their ideas. So, they were walking down because of their charm. They said their hardness, they were close. 
give him utmost respect, followed by Burgess gave him a job, Tinsel next, then Rick. Most of the inhabitants were giving them some stares and comments behind their backs because of the interracial couple. Despite the diversity of all life forms across the universe, still the coyote and caretaker greatly supported each other. Leon told Lucy that he was first introduced to F Zero during the X competition, much like Beastman, Octavian, and many others. He was treated unfairly due to his appearance. Motivated, he was motivated as the Elder promised to assist the planet South from poverty. He earned extra money. He became a basement busman for the Falcon House. He was a soccer coach for the children and head of an orphanage. Coincidentally, he was one himself. He then told Lucy on when he met Tinsel how she wanted to help out with the predicament. So this is actually a recap of lap four. So, like I said, just read yourself. <clears throat> this is actually a recap of lap four, so... Uh, I probably should have eliminated this. Oh well. At the same spot where Rick and Haluka sat 150 years ago, Lucy and Leon had a table looking toward the city. You're a good dog, Leon, and you don't have to feel embarrassed of loving me. You have every right to. Dean leans in for a kiss, though he playfully licked her instead. She could do nothing but giggle the whole way through. Back at the Falcon House, Clank's tablet was going through a disturbance. The screen went blank for a few seconds, then revealed a blurry image of a fat F-Zero machine with points protruding from it. Hey guys, I see something! The Black Bull? Black Shadow? What? Then as the portable returned to normal, schematics came up. No, it isn't. Something named... The Big Fang. A machine made by the Curlon Corp. BIO-REX! Chris, wait! Clank, stay here! Chris, let me go with you. I owe you that much after you saved me from him at Green Plant. It's too dangerous to take on by yourself. Sure, Tinsel. What's he doing in Mute City? I don't know. I have to stop him. Wait for me! The Big Fang hits like a tank, so it won't be easy. He recalled it was designed to have a high top speed and a tight grip, making it fit well with the pilot's aggressiveness. Its exterior was as hard as titanium steel, though it can make a slow crawl before it reaches its maximum acceleration. By the process of elimination, Tinsel decided to call Gomer and Shields their last hope to assist Beastman in bringing Biorex to custody. He was able to reach Lucy and Leon. He only saw it whiz past them with the Sharpedo esque cover car nearing its crosshairs. Chris was closing in at the crowded streets as he was creating a path of mayhem and destruction. Both pedestrians and objects were at its deadly mercy. People were gasping and yelping everywhere, though the clustered roads were no place for a battlefield. We'll never catch him! Not here! God damn you! I won't let you cause any more harm! The twin Aria hardly cut Rex off as did the Astro Robin. His savage reflexes caused him to swerve and hit the foundation of the building with numerous glass windows. The shorts read down on it, but the fangs still pressed on. Jack! I thought you were at headquarters! Lucy and Leon just showed up. I don't want to miss on the action. We're here too, Tinsel. Okay, let's stick to it then! Twin Rio is weak as a styrofoam cup, but light, making it a nice distraction. So is the comet. Hyperspeeder had better cornering, but a slighter and punitive body. It was prone to being wrecked as with the dual German craft, but they never gave up. Astro Robin had just enough velocity, but a decent strength as it continually clashed with the monster. Reckless Rex eventually had enough. <sighs> He's heading to the freeway! Better than being on the street! She was the fastest to keep up with the brute and distracted him with a side attack. Then along left a blemish and he retaliated ready to come into a metallic rail. Ah! He's crushing me! I hadn't gotten it fully repaired yet! Tinsel. 
Of course. He used the same tactic he did before while he made a sub-bin attack of the Big Bang's rear. It was enough to clip it and the Biorex lost control. Everyone, brace yourselves! <sighs> Road to the classroom until it's over to the guardrail and the opposing side. Crush catapulted Biorex about three feet into the air. Gomar and Shio caught the lizard and went berserk as he bashed the glass. They hit the brakes, tossing him next to a nearby truck. The runaway craft crashed into the corner of it, making the ship tip over. Little did the onlookers or the Cretaceous creature knew it was filled with manure. I got a little inspiration for Back to the Future. Lost his balance and it fell into the 300 pound pile of poop. Manure! I hate manure! They can't help but laugh at that. Although Beastman was able to compose himself as he harnessed his long awaited captive. He had his jaws as a, in a nozzle. Taste, then was cuffed, and thrown into the cargo area behind the cockpit of the hyperspeeder. Great! Now it's gonna smell like sh short predator carcasses. What should we do with that? Chris suggested that instead of being blown up, like Jack recommended, it'll be used for spare parts. Look, I gotta go somewhere to apprehend this Jurassic jerk. There's a jail not too far from here, but is he? You should take him there. Although the cell is gonna stink to high heaven, and Rex may get dangerous if he has to be hosed down. Hurry back for the race! Thanks, guys. I'll be back in a jiffy. He couldn't feel any more excited now that Biorex has reaped the prison. Correction officers would have a field day with this one. By the time the Cosmo Terminal competition was a day away, Clank was hogging the central computer. He was hacking and typing his fingers off until he eventually saw a cockpit view from the Dragonbird. Rick was just about to begin a duel between him and Falcon on a port town course with multiple dash plates and jumps. Even a more dramatic one was up ahead. According to the intel, it was known as the Arrow Dive, and it was only a simulation. Clank contacted Rick, and he was looking forward for them to watch. I'm in position, Clank. Ready when you are. Jeez, what happened? Never mind that. It was just an accident while I was practicing with Falcon. It's pretty common. I mean, you can tell he's the best. Where are you, anyway? I'm at headquarters. I'm using the central computer so we can watch you. This is the last day before the Cosmo Terminal rates. Yes, it is. Rick, let's go. We need to do this. Right. I'm on it, Falcon. The starting gate was activated and the fences holding the machines lowered. The countdown commenced and Clank was just as jittery as the trainee was. Guys, hurry up! Rick is gonna start the race against Falcon! Easy, mate. Yeah, we're here. Give Falcon everything you got. All of Tinsel's friends but Drac, Joey, and Yugi were there. The gentle giant was on a delivery with Roger, while the young duelists were facing some threat that went as far back as 10,000 years. The signal went off, and the dragonbird was very close to the blue Falcon. You won't be able to beat me, Rick. This is my turn. We'll see about that. At first, they were fighting over the dash plates, and the jumps kept making them feel more giddy. Then they went to an incline, and three more plates greeted the pair just before the awesome leap. They felt they were soaring like the birds of prey, but it only lasted for a couple seconds. Next came more hops, a sharp left turn, and two more dashes. Finally, there was a pit area to the left and a couple speed boosts to the right before the finish line. The second lap was definitely accelerating stretch as one was using them while the other boosted just to get ahead. It was rinse and repeat till they entered the goal. All right, Rick. Final lap. Show me what your dragon bird can do. Rick was hesitant as he recollected the incident that happened almost five days ago. He wasn't sure if he was ready to use the booster fire now. Meanwhile, the pilots at headquarters were anxious. What does he mean? What's he waiting for? 
her. What does Falcon have in mind? Whatever it is, it should explain why he's an unbeatable racer. Look! Something's happening to the Blue Falcon! They all had their eyes glued straight at the screen, watching the machine glow as if a Pokemon was evolving. Energy was building up, and it began to spin as fast as a tornado. They could barely hear the scream from the neighboring opponent. Booster fire! What's going on? No one had ever seen anything like it, let alone Falcon's vehicle. What's it doing? Wheeler, this must be Falcon's secret move. Watch out! Rick? Rick! His comms turned off, but we can still see him. They were miles from the home front, and Rick just kept seeing his rival take the upper hand. Finally cast his doubts aside. It's time now. Here I come, Falcon. Booster fire! <laughs> he held the wheel tightly as he managed to catch up to the bounty hunter on the straightaway. He looked behind and saw his opponent. Rick! On the right, he ran over the dash plates while Rick was on the pit area to the left. They were neck to neck until the screen went into static making the pilots edgy and confused. They were outraged at the sudden malfunction. But outside, the winner was... No way! Falcon was frantic that his one true match managed to beat him. Rick was successful in performing the booster fire, but the spectators didn't know what that amazing technique was. The resolution returned to normal, and they only saw two idle machines, making them have a constant debate on who won. Since the Dragonbird had a higher boost rate than Falcon's by just one level alone, he was able to accomplish the race just mere seconds before him. Needless to say, Falcon was incredibly shocked that his own boost fire wasn't enough to complete it in time, and the fact that he hardly lost one, let alone on his personal private domain. Rick tried to block out as much of the Disney as his poor head could, momentarily saw his mentor standing over him and soon grabbed his hand. With a grin, the bounty hunter advised him to watch his boost times if he should use it again, particularly in the Cosmo Terminal. The dragon's comm started to chirp. Rick ran to it and called for Clank. The, muggy, the foggy monitor cleared, revealing the kid's disturbed face. Uh, Rick? Who won? We were arguing about it. Who won this race? All he did was just smile. I did. What? You beat Falcon? How was that even possible? What did you do? Well, Falcon taught me a special technique. The booster fire. What's that? I've... Never heard of it. I'll explain more later. Must prepare for the upcoming race at the Cosmo Terminal. I'll tell you once I leave Port Town. I still can't believe you were able to best Falcon. No one is any faster than him. But I am. Then his face glowed both internally and externally as the simulation ended. He and Falcon were back in the garage again looked around for a brief while and ended the call. We're inside Falcon's base again. Rick out. He slumped onto the seat. Wow. That was fun. Yeah, it was, Clank. Rick won. You must be the new champion. That guy's got a lot of spunk. That's Ricky for ya. We can win this next race, for sure. You're not too far off. Tomorrow, Cosmo Terminal will be very interesting. The following machines that will enter will be the Dragonbird, Blue Falcon, Deep Claw, Moon Shadow, Red Gazelle, and even an interesting craft known as the Crushing Quasar. Since e D is going to be a part of this, shouldn't Kate get in? I don't see why not. I hope it's not too late for her to join. Yet found 
out thanks to Rick and Tinsel that Kate and Eve Lee developed a relationship after he saved her life from Black Shadow's evil doing. But why would Optimian compete? Unless... He may still work for Dark Million! That sneaky cephalopod! After all I've done for him! Relax, I'm sure he'll be on our side. We don't, don't know if he's with Black, Black Shadow yet. Just presumed he would. Damn, if only I could register if my comet wasn't so banged up. I'm certain Rick and the others will put a stop to him if he should get crafty. Calm down. <sighs> All right. But he better wipe him out with a booster fire if he does. I don't sponsor traitors. We all need to cool our jets. Let's practice at the training ground for tomorrow. We need to make sure our skills are top notch. Clash would have wanted it. Yeah! The team eventually decided that Lucy, Leon, and Jack, the Hawk Miners, Clank, and Tinsel will stay behind. They needed as many strong seasoned drivers as they could find. With the concept of chess masters, I'm guessing that Black Shadow is the evil manipulator, while Falcon is the mysterious elusive from the opposing side. Uh, blah, 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 blah. No wonder it made a cameo appearance as stage in Smash Bros. If only Smash would have more reps from F Zero, especially Rick. I mean, yeah, Ultimate did have, like, spirits, but never liked it. Listen, Nintendo, you have Namco, Bandai, and Sakurai by your side. And Ryo from Street Fighter was already chosen as a competitor via DLC. So what the hell are you waiting for? What I did what I did here was something called a guide, a Japanese term meaning a side story subplot. Very popular for works in Japan, especially anime, manga, and games. From a different character's perspective, mostly though, mostly though, flashbacks minus the main protagonists. In this case, it was about Leon the Beast Man without Rick and Falcon. So Rick learned the booster fire and was successful in using it. Would it be enough for the tumultuous race in Cosmo Terminal, especially against Dark Million and their formidable recruit EAD? Find out next time. There you have it. I'm actually halfway done with this epic. Man, I am so proud of this. So next time will finally be the quarterfinals of the Cosmo Terminal Rates. I'll see you guys then.